The 2012 Air National Guard Series has seen three drivers emerge above the rest. Dave Vilwak has two wins in a boat that has been fast but fragile. Former series champion Steve David has been a constant contender, but driving mistakes and tough breaks have limited him to just one win. The surprise of the season has been young Jimmy Shane, whose speed and consistency have provided him his first career unlimited hydroplane victory. Two races remain, and their National Guard title is there for the taking. Sportsnet welcomes you to a national championship. From Mission Bay in San Diego, California, Peters and May presents the North American Championship for the Air National Guard Unlimited Hydroplane Series. Hi, everybody. Bill Weber along with Mike Allen. Thanks for having us in for the race. Two events remain on the Air National Guard schedule, including the season finale in Qatar in January. Three teams chasing the championship. Steve David came here with a 197-point lead over Dave Vilwak. But, Mike, you know a little bit about chiseling off championship points on Mission Bay. I do, Bill. When we won the championship in 2006, we came into this event 283 points behind the Alberto team, and we knew we had to chip away at it every single heat. Third team in the championship chase, the five-gram trucking of Jimmy Shane. He's done a good job in quality equipment. Quality equipment, Bill, the biggest factor this year is they've taken three boats, downsized to one. They've put in all of their best efforts into this one package. Mission Bay is salt water. Not the issue it used to be, but still a concern. Still a concern. The teams have done well over the years to try and reduce the intake of salt water on these things, but it's going to play a big factor in coming up for this one-minute pin. Let's take a look at the qualifying results. Qualifying was held on very rough water. Dave Vilwak, the only driver above 158 miles an hour. Three qualifying heats, three laps each. The better you finish, the more points you earn. The points earned in each heat, plus those earned in qualifying, determine the six boats that make the final. A seventh boat will be added from the provisional race. Here are the boats as they were leaving the dock, Mike, and this is an important part of the race. Very critical. These guys have to get the boats up on plane without salt water coming over the front end of that boat and getting into the engine. In the original start of Heat 1A, Kip Brown with dead of the water in a dangerous spot on the course. It had to be red flagged. The race was restarted. It was a battle between Dave Vilwak and Jimmy Shane at the beginning, but Vilwak able to pull away on the backstretch and then cruise to a 400-point win in Heat 1A. So a good start for the spirit of Qatar. Jimmy Shane comes home second. Greg Hop, a third place finish. Dave, you just pulled off 400 important points. How do you chip away at this lead? Well, you got to race them, and we just can't get the ping pong balls to come out where we have to race the Alberto. While the old boy Alberto with Steve David was in heat 1B. This is on board with the beacon plumbing for J. Michael Kelly, but he was early at the start and was penalized. And the six, the Miss Madison Oboy Alberto, driven by 58-year-old Steve David, was able to cruise to a victory, setting up a battle later in the day with Dave Vilwak. Now Steve David and company, time to work on their race setups. Got a couple of different start sequence we're going to work on, a couple of different prop gear engine combinations. Just build that momentum to get to the final and win this thing and lock this points championship up. Here's a look at the points. Now, this is the North American Championship presented by Peters and May. Well, Peters and May have some pretty big plans. Here's David Holly. Yeah, we're really excited because it's another, you know, continuation of our relationship with H1. And as you know, we've always been involved with the sport for four or five years now, where we're trying to develop the sport and develop it globally as well. But working on the national side is important to us, and having this opportunity is brilliant. Now, when we go to Qatar, you're looking at a similar event in the Middle East. Yeah, the, the idea is that we obviously have the Middle East sort of continental championship as well. And, you know, the way we're looking forward to growing the sport could be we have two or three races in the Middle East and all the points add up to becoming the Middle East champion. And eventually try and get something where we have three continents and have a triple crown. You know, the Doha event that Sheikh Hassan puts on is obviously a testament to what can happen. And hopefully as we move forward, the other international sites will see that and uh, we can develop it that way. And our thanks to Peters and May. They are a true supporter of the sport. 11 race teams are here, but there's another team we'd like you to meet. The men and women in those blue shirts. They are the H1 officials working hard every race weekend. We'd like to introduce you to some of them, beginning with the pit boss, Ted Grange. I come in and uh, I work with the sites here to set the pits up, uh, make sure that there's no problems uh, or boats can't park to each other just like they do in NASCAR. 
uh, make sure that the uh, Air Guard H1 series is set up and everything's going the way it should. Amazingly, Ted has been doing this for six decades. I started with my uncle. He ran the Detroit Pits uh, in 1952. So I've been doing it since 1952. I'm an old project manager, you know, and, and that's all this is, is a project. The boats have to be in at a certain time. The fuel has to be in. They have to have their ice, have to have water, have to have electricity, things like that. It's controlled chaos, and it just, once we get going into it, it just goes, and it flows. Everybody knows what they're supposed to do, and we just do it. All right, Billy, copy. They are leaving the course right now, leaving for the course. Copy. As one heat goes out, we're putting the next heat in, and then we're getting them out, and sometimes we do have three heats, so I'm putting in the third heat. And there's two of us that do it, and we split the, uh, the pits in half and it works pretty well. If I haven't heard from the crews or any of the two, three referees that we have, I'm looking to, uh, to have a Coke and relax. Ted's a real nice guy and really popular down there in the pits, and that's a really difficult job he has. Dave Philwock has a difficult job. He's got to get 400 more points. He wants to make the final. Back to San Diego in a minute. Experience the extreme adrenaline action of H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Racing by winning the H1 Unlimited trip to Qatar sweepstakes. And don't miss your chance to win this exclusive trip for two to the 2014 UIM World Championship in Doha, Qatar. We pay for the airfare, hotel accommodations, and VIP ticketing to H1 Unlimited Race. Find us on Facebook for a chance to win a trip to the 2014 World Championship in Qatar. Complete contest details at h1unlimited.com. The 2012 Air National Guard Hydroplane Series is brought to you by Air National Guard. Visit GoANG.com to learn more about exciting opportunities in your area. By Whispering Turbines, where life begins at 200 miles per hour. And by Peters and May. For professional management of your worldwide boat transport and logistics, remember Peters and May. A big thank you to all the volunteers that helped run Bayfair. Weren't sure the sport would race here this year, but we're glad to be back in San Diego and racing on Mission Bay. In Heat 2A, the number 11 Peters and Maybo with a new driver. J.W. Myers out with a shoulder injury from his blowover in Detroit. Here's Steve Montgomery with the new driver. Tom Thompson holds multiple world and national records, a many-time inductee into the APBA Hall of Champions. But when you get here, Tom, it's your first weekend in an unlimited hydroplane. Give us your impressions of the big boat. It was really interesting when I left the dock because it does go off so slow and you got to be careful not to get too much salt in the engine, especially here in San Diego. Then once it gets going and you put your foot in it, it's, it's got a lot of acceleration. So big boat, a lot of acceleration, a little bit different than what I'm used to. Probably a little faster than you've gone before. Quite a bit faster. That was something at boat size, you don't really realize it. I look down and look at the speedo we have in the boat and I'm like, well, that's different. So. You did a great job. Everyone was very impressed. Welcome to the Air National Guard Hydroplane Drivers Fraternity. You're a very welcome addition. Well, thank you very much. The Peters and May team does a great job putting a boat under me, and they're going to continue to do that, and I'm going to continue doing my job for them. So good luck to Tommy Thompson, and our best wishes to J.W. Myers as he recovers from that shoulder injury. Here is the lineup for Heat 2A, and this is a heat packed with potential talent. Spirit of Guitar, the Graham Trucking, Jones Racing, Peters and May, Mr. Julio, and of course, the 88 boat, the Degree Man. This is on board with Mark Evans. There's Tommy Thompson in the Peters and May. He's in lane five. John Zimmerman in the Jones Racing. There's Scott Liddicote, 88 Degree Men. Continue to move inside. See the Peters and May countdown clock is now at 10. Jimmy Shane has the inside lane, the preferred lane by most of these drivers. Coming to the green flag. Green flag in the air, and it's a legal start. On board with Bill Watt. You see Shane in lane one on the inside. Now from the Whispering Turbine Skycam. As they make the turn into turn one. That could be crowded down there. It looks pretty crowded right now, Bill. These, these guys are going through this first turn. Everybody's giving everybody enough room to get through. But it is going to be a very strong heat, like you mentioned. The battle down the backstretch now. Shane on the far right of your screen, then Bill Watt. This is the one part of the race course that you have to be very careful of as a driver. 
there's a tremendous amount of wind that comes from the right side, flows underneath the bridge, and wants to lift these boats up about mid-track. And as you know, it's not just rough at one end of this race course. Turn two, also rough. You see Dave Vilwak catching a little air there. And Scott Lidicote in the 88, he's further outside, and he's really getting the rough ride. Yeah, Mission Bay is a pretty shallow race course that we run on, so the water will tend to kick up. And when you put six boats on a race course, I don't care where you are, it's going to get rough. Jimmy Shane trying to catch Dave Vilwak. On board with the defending series champion. Drivers absolutely love this race course. These guys will hang it out like never before. Our qualifying speeds are faster. Our competition speeds are faster. And you're going to get faster speeds no matter what lane you're on in Mission Bay. First lap for Dave Vilwak, 152.866 miles an hour. Watch these guys air them out right here as they get to that treacherous part of the race course. Phil Walk and Jimmy both standing them up on end. Shane was about three miles an hour slower on that first lap, but he is right there. Phil Walk heads into turn two, in lane two. Oh, oh no. trouble! That engine is let go. Boy, this is uh, reminiscent of uh, Tri Cities, Bill. Dave Phil Walk slowing. Jimmy Shane goes by on the left. There goes Scott Liddicote in lane three. Very valuable points lost here for the overall championship at the end of the year, Bill. Not a thing he can do about it. Bill Watt dead in the water on lap two. Got 400 points in his first heat. Here comes Tommy Thompson. Passes Bill Watt. He saw the boat on the left. Now here comes Mark Evans and Mr. Julio. You can also see our GoPro cameras. They're a little bit salted down as well. That's right, that salt water gets in the air. You want to keep it out of your turbine engine, and we try and keep it off the camera lens. No problem here for Jimmy. No salt water on that lens out in front. Jimmy running this thing hard but clean. He knows Bill Walk is down. He knows there's nobody near him. Just wants to bring this home for 400 points. 150.3 miles per hour for Jimmy on that second lap. This is the battle for second. It's got Lidicote on the left, John Zimmerman on the right. This boat's really walking it. This is Lidicote. Now Zimmerman has the inside lane. Coming to the checkered flag, Jimmy Shane. A win and 400 points in Heat 2A. Now the battle for second. Zimmerman trying to catch Lidicote. They are side by side. And at the line, it's Zimmerman. Second place and 300 points. So Shane with the win, but a DNF for Dave Vilwak. Mike, let's take a look at Dave's incident. Yeah, it looks like another engine failure here. I'm not sure what part of the engine, but possibly the hot end of the motor, which is basically where all the action takes place. And that's very unusual as well, because these engines are very reliable. So I'm not sure if they're doing something outside the box with a gear or prop combination, but that thing just let go again. So Vilwak gets a tow, and back at the dock is the man who will check out the Qatar boat before its next heat. He's Peter Thompson, H1 Unlimited's chief tech inspector. Uh, for 20-some years now, I've been working with the Unlimiteds, and primary responsibility is safety, and after that, it's technical. Every year, I go through a, an annual on every boat prior to the season to make sure that the uh, equipment has been certified and checked and uh, so it's safe, and uh, we can go racing and have a lot of fun at it. And after all that's done, then I move into the technical aspect and make sure that they are uh, following the rules and just generally making sure so everybody's confident that we're running a safe and... Uh, uh, a technically good fleet. The tech team is busy from sunup to well past sundown, and they have procedures following every heat. During the heat races, the recorders are taken directly to our tech truck, where Scott Patton, our uh, technical guy there, takes care of it. He reads all the data, makes sure that the M2 is within parameters and the fuel is correct. After a final heat, we take all the hatches off, inspect all the compartments, make sure that everything's hooked up correctly, the fuel lines are where they're supposed to be. At that time, the uh, the recorder is going over to Scott Patton, the technical truck. He reads all the uh, flow data and everything there, the N2s, and then it comes back to me that it's been approved. I go through the boat. Once I'm happy with it, then I certify the race, and that's the winner or whoever it is. Now, one complicated task for race officials is measuring fuel flow to watch for an N2 violation. It's complicated to explain, but Nate Brown is going to try and educate us with our crew chief, Confidential. One of the most frustrating things as a crew chief is to go out and win a heat, do great, to come back in to find out you're disqualified because of N2. 
into engine RPM, shaft speed. We're only allowed to go 110% max for three seconds during qualifying, five seconds during a race. Rob Schaumer is here to explain a little bit about that and some data that we actually get from our boat. Here's the data that we record during the race on the boat. And you can see the purple line is our boat speed, uh, and we hit about 192 miles an hour during straightaways. The yellow line is the N2 or shaft speed, and the orange line is the 110% can't exceed line. If we look at some of these peaks, which are at the end of a straightaway, you can see that we start exceeding 110% around there, and every one of these lines is one second. So one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, we've exceeded the limit and we'd be disqualified. So you can see how tough it is, that one fraction of a second. In this case, it was one-tenth of one second. We were disqualified. We got no points for that. That's how racing goes. Yeah, it's a very fine line. The guys from the Spirit of Guitar looking at the damage to their boat, and Mike is with Jimmy Shane. Jimmy, congratulations on that heat win. You did exactly what you needed to do to start looking towards the, the end of the road here and catching up on points. That's it. You know, that's what we needed. We needed uh, to have a good finish in the heat. Got lane one, got a good start, did everything that I could, and uh, luckily we came out with the win. Next, Steve David goes for two heat wins in a row when we race on from San Diego. A strong showing of support for the H1 Series here on Mission Bay, but the Qatar fans are worried. Here's Mike with Dave Vilwa. Dave, uh, big disappointment here. It's going to hurt you in points. What happened out there? Yeah, I just blew up another hot end. So, so it. the propeller's on it, gearbox is good. Just that time, of, that time the gearbox didn't cause a problem, the hot end just let go. So you guys are going to get after it, do what you can, see what you can do to try and make this final? Yeah, we'll see. I don't know if Eric even wants to. We'll see what Eric does. We'll go from there. Eric Alstrom would be the co-owner of the Spirit of Guitar. They've got some tough decisions to make over there. Meanwhile, J. Michael Kelly was supposed to be in Heat 2B. It has not been a very good weekend for them, and they are done for the day. We had uh, a lot of problems this weekend uh, with salt, and uh, we really didn't understand exactly why. At first, we had a door on the cowling that would close, open and close to keep the salt water out. What we found out is that when you close it, it, uh, it acts like a vacuum in there. And we were sucking salt water around the back of the towel and into the motor. And then uh, we still continued to get salt and found out later that the shaft seal was leaking and spraying water as we were running. That gets sucked right back into the motor. So we're salted down. So the salt water starting to claim its victims. Here is the start for Heat 2B. The early leader is Greg Hopp in that yellow and black boat. He's in lane three. In the 17, Miss Red Dot, Kip Brown making his return to the cockpit. He just got his cast off. He's wearing a plastic cast for a broken fibula, but in this heat, his boat failed to finish. Meanwhile, Steve David in the old boy Alberto, another spectacular run and 400 points. We needed those points. It puts us 573 ahead in the national points race, but take nothing for granted. Treat every race as though it's going to be your last for the day. He's got his strategy all mapped out. So David is first, Hop is second, and Kelly Stockland is third. And Mike is with Kelly. All right, we're down here with the driver of the bucket list racing team, Kelly Stockland, who's running an experimental boat this year. Kelly, this thing's been coming along nicely. What's the biggest difference here compared to every other Unlimited? The two differences are the weight and the engine. The, the weight is about two-thirds of what the other boats are required to be, and the engine is a T53, which is about half the horsepower. You've got some consistent laps that you're knocking off here one by one. Is there any more left in it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was running really hard on the sponsors this morning at 137. We did pull a couple of rabbits out of our hat. We were very pleased with it. Uh, there's some more left. There's some more left. That's a hard-working racer right there. Here are the points after two sets of qualifying heats. Remember, the top six drivers in points after three sets of qualifying heats will make the final disappointing weekend for Kip Brown and J. Michael Kelly. Some more of the officials for the H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Series. They're on land, they're in the air, in fact, they're just about everywhere. The chief referee is Mike Noonan, and Mike and his staff have a lot to do every race weekend.
we have a, a lot of ground to cover. We have a lot of territory to watch. I mean, a two and a half mile course, you're looking at probably four or five square miles uh, of boats, and they could be anywhere on the water. And they're sometimes they're right on top of each other, and sometimes they're all spread out. Well, I tell you what, Steve really turned late on that one, man. He, he got right up in the spray. I mean, there was plenty of room, but man, he turned way late. The two helicopter referees, the referee on the judges stand, and any other referees that we might have stationed around the course are all on a channel talking to each other during the whole heat. We, we discuss what's happening, what we saw, what possibly could develop, and uh, communicate constantly with each other and eventually uh, pass that word on to the teams through what we call the corral, which is where all the spotters are, or the race uh, teams have a guy that talks to the driver. That way they can pass on the penalty. If it's a tough call, and it's one of those things where we just could not determine visually, we do have replay, we have lots of angles, we have helicopters, we have ground cameras, and we have the in-boat, the GoPro cameras on the boats themselves. So we'll go back and look at it and make sure that uh, it's verifying that the call we made was the correct one. Mike's missed a few races here and there, not very many, but he's been the chief referee since 1982, and he's getting ready for Heat 3A. All the fans here on Mission Bay to watch the Air National Guard Series, we want to invite them and invite you, too, to like us on Facebook and be sure and follow the sport on Twitter. Get the latest information on everything going on in the Air National Guard Series. Getting ready for Heat 3A, one of the boats on the water, John Zimmerman. A pleasant surprise this season. They've run really well for a team that basically is all volunteer. Here's our unlimited access pass. We don't have the budget a lot of the teams do. We're kind of a you know, race to race sponsorship deal. Uh, Jeff Campbell, our crew chief, is tireless. He's down there at the shop before any of us, and he's there after we've gone, and, and uh, he's a very talented guy. If we have an issue between heats, we're gonna be in trouble, because I can't get back here to change motors or gearboxes right. or fix the swamps, and, and we've only got Mike and Mike. It's all part-time guys, you know, they, we all have real jobs. I actually work for the Red Dot Corporation, which is a whole nother story, but uh, at the shop, it's, it's usually just two or three of us, nights, weekends, whatever we can do to make the thing happen. We spend hours and hours just fine-tuning every little thing without spending any money. I think a, a full-time sponsorship is right around the corner for us, um, and it'd be huge for us. I mean, we'd, we'd be right up there with that. We need more propellers, we need more gear ratios, we need depth of equipment, um, maybe pay a couple guys so you know, it's not such a volunteer deal. Everybody's working a day job and then they go you know, work all night on the boat. What the Jones team would like to see is a superhero swoop in and save the day. This whole Spider-Man thing is kind of a strange deal. Um, since we're low budget, we buy our rags from the Goodwill. And we opened up one of the bags and there's a Spider-Man towel. Kind of became our mascot over the years. So now every race we go to, there's something else that's Spider-Man on the boat. Now, every time I turn around the corner, somebody hands me something else that says Spider-Man on it. Has it been good luck for you? Okay. Um, so far. That's a fun bunch of guys, and they've had some success still looking for the first win. Here's the lineup for Heat 3A, and you are on board with Scott Liddicote in the Degree Men 88. Peter's made countdown clock just under two minutes. You can see these boats basically trying to park and start, trolling along the water, and that is not working out very well for Scott. We're gonna try something in this heat. We're gonna eavesdrop on some of the officials and let you hear them have their conversation. That's Doug Brow, he's an assistant referee in one helicopter. Chief referee Mike Noonan is in another helicopter. And Billy Noonan, an assistant referee, is on the start-finish tower. I think 88 is definitely gonna have to go around. I think they're all gonna have to go around. That was a little premature. Yeah, basically, Scott Liddico was in a position where he could not go slow. He was getting too much water. He had to get back in the gas. He's going to be way behind the starting field here. I think he had to speed up because he was getting a lot of spray over the bow. The rails weren't working. He had sped up, but now he was too far. Yeah, Scott Liddico just had a little bit too much speed to try and go grab that lane. He would have been over the one-minute mark, so he has to go all the way back around. One, mark. Good score up, good score up. Yep, copy that uh, good score up. And that's how we know the score up is good and how we know the start is legal by listening in to the H1 radio. Here's Mike. I got him. Didn't take Tommy long to get his nose in there, did it? He learned fast, didn't he? We just saw a veteran move there by a rookie driver, and Tommy Thompson's ready to go, Bill. He took lane two away, and Zimmerman kind of left the door open for him. It looks like it's going to be the uh, 5 
situation going into your very first turn first time in unlimited hydroplane what did you ask on the radio i asked them if this thing will turn at these speeds and they said yes it will turn and don't lift <laughs> scott lidico made a very poor start trying to catch mark evans he's got the shorter way around evans likes to work the outside of the course there you see mark in the 57 mr julio and the 88 degree men of lidico Heard that comment from a referee. John Zimmerman has this thing aired out down the back straightaway. First lap for Jimmy Sheen, 147.9 miles an hour. You saw John Zimmerman in second. This is Tommy Thompson, runs in third. Mark Evans runs in fourth. He is being chased down by the 88 degree men of Scott Lidico. Scott getting a rough ride because he had to come back around for that start. Didn't get to get out front with everybody else and just, just beats the boat up, Bill. Boy, he has to be frustrated after that start. Working the inside lane, he's going to take the position away. That will help him get points toward making the final. Up front, Jimmy Shane is the race leader. 26-year-old driver from Maryland. His first full year in an unlimited hydroplane. Working the front wing. Good shot of it right here. As you can see, Jimmy's putting the boat back down in the water in that treacherous spot. And then towards the end of the straightaway, he'll keep the wing in it to make sure at those high speeds it stays on the water. 57 is going dead in the water. He's slowing down outer marker, outer marker, near entrance, turn one. Now he's off the course. He's off the course. Yeah, no problem. He's totally out of the way. Disappointment for Mark Evans, but he is in a safe location. Meanwhile, Jimmy Sheen coming down to get the checkered flag. John Zimmerman will come home in second. Spider-Man will be happy about that. Third place to Tommy Thompson, once again making his weekend debut in an unlimited hydroplane. But he is a decorated driver at many levels. And Scott Lidico will come home fourth in the 88 degree men. He's going to have to hope he has enough points to make the final. All right, no calls, turn one. Calls, turn two. Good from up here. Take a look at the results from 3A, but listen to this. On the last lap, Shane ran a 144.9, Zimmerman a 144.2. Dave Vilwatt, huge heat coming up for him. He desperately needs the points. Hot day here on Mission Bay in San Diego. Temperature near 100 degrees for the Air National Guard Series. Take a look at the highlights from 3B. Dave Vilwatt desperately needed the points. He took no prisoners. His first lap, 158.895 miles an hour. That's faster than everybody's qualifying lap, except his own. Steve David was fine taking a second place. Those two guys will make the final. Now, there will be six boats on the front row in the final and a one-boat trailer. That was determined by a three-boat provisional in which the Peters and May machine, driven by Tommy Thompson, again, his first weekend in an unlimited, was able to pull off the win. 
back on shore. He gets a hug from Peterson May CEO, David Holly. So on the front row in the finals, Steve David, Jimmy Shane, Dave Vilwat, John Zimmerman, Greg Hopp, and Scott Liddicote. Tommy Thompson will be the trailer. Disappointing weekend for Mark Evans, Kip Brown, and J. Michael Kelly. Now it's time to meet Kristen Kelly, Molly Bergeson, and ANG recruiter Nazareth Zdeha in our ANG Spotlight. Hey guys, so I see you guys got your degree shirts on. Yep. What brought you here to the Air Guard? Well, our good friends growing up, she, her family races race books and they're sponsored by degree men. So she told us to come down because this is convenient for both of us to get here. So we came down to basically cheer on our race team. Do you guys have any questions that I can answer? What's a good recruit? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, any person that is wanting to join, of course, is a great recruit. Anybody who wants to serve their country, this is definitely a good place to There's do it. There's a job for everybody. There's a job for what everybody. You want to do. Exactly. Yeah. You just okay. got to be qualified. Gotcha. Okay. Got to be qualified. What are and some of the jobs that you can do once you're in? We have anywhere from medical to security forces, which is like military police. Civil engineering, which do they do construction, things like that. Aircraft maintenance, every type of job that you come into in the Air Force itself or the Air Guard, it's technical specific. So you're going to have not only the experience of the technical parts of it, but also education benefits for it. I'm interested in nursing. What opportunities do you guys have in the Air Guard? Are you a nurse already? No, but I'm in nursing school. Okay. What we have, we have different programs that you can come into. You can either be a nurse in a medical squadron, you can be a nurse in our Aero Evacuation Medical Squadron, which is also known as AES. They actually are flight nurses availability. You can get, of course, the bonuses like a $50,000 grant for, or not grant, but bonus for a right. loan repayment program that we have for that, or 45 grand for you to, you know, do as you wish as far as a bonus goes. Okay. Um, other than that, you're going to gain so much experience, so much military experience. I mean, you're going to go to places across the world that you never thought existed. John Zimmerman had a third in 1B and a second in 2A and 3A. Now he's trying to chase the win in San Diego. The final is next. We want to salute the more than 106,000 officers and enlisted people who serve in 89 flying units and 579 mission support units for the Air National Guard. We thank you for your service and for your second year of support of the H-1 Unlimited Hydroplanes. Ready for the final here on Mission Bay in San Diego. It's a six-boat front row and a one-boat trailer. You see the Peterson May countdown clock is at 45. The score up was good. We can take you through the field with our GoPro onboard cameras. That's Greg Hoppe. He's on the outside. John Zimmerman said that those guys were either going to go for the win or go for the ultimate championship in points. Small aerodynamic change for Scott Liddicote in the 88-degree man. Dave Vilwak, these guys have replaced an engine and a gearbox combination that they're excited about. Steve David, engine change and propeller change. And the guy that always wants to get on the inside, Jimmy Shane and Tom Anderson put a smaller prop on there for him, Bill. And what does all that tell you as you look at the trailer, Tommy Thompson? From all the notes we've seen so far, these guys are preparing for a rough final. It's going to be seven boats, and it's going to get rough. Coming to the green flag. Green flag in the air. All boats are legal. The start is good. Steve David tries to race out in front of the youngster, Jimmy Shane, as they head for turn one. Shane on the inside. That's the Graham trucking. Then the Miss Madison O'Boy Alberto. You look from the whispering German sky cam. Dave Philwalk runs in third. On board now with Shane looking forward at Steve David. Great wing action you can see right here. Jimmy Shane is going to fly that thing to try and get out front of Steve David. On board with Philwalk. It's going to be tough to make up ground in that third lane. Wow. Everybody getting some air. Yeah, you want to talk about fast, you can look directly underneath every one of these boats at over 100 and probably 85, 95 miles an hour. Now, talking to Steve David and his crew chief, Mike Hansen, before the final, they were very open. They said they learned a lot yesterday, and they actually put in the acceleration box that got Steve a first-place finish in the first heat on Saturday. That acceleration box just means that they want to get down to the first turn first and beat everybody else down there and worry about the rest later. 26-year-old Jimmy Shane got the win in Tri-Cities. Pretty rough in there? Pretty rough. You can see Jimmy bouncing around inside that cockpit. Mission Bay is not known for being rough, but again, we got seven boats on the water right now. Side by side for the lead, Steve David and Jimmy Shane. First lap for Steve David, 150.902 miles an hour. 
Look how clean these boats are. You can look directly under each of them right now. I can guarantee you everybody has a brick on the throttle pedal, and the only difference here is how they operate that wing. Scott Liddicoat, degree man, off the pace. There's Tommy Thompson, started as the trailer in this seven-boat final. Greg Hop passing Liddicoat for position. Back up front, side by side still, David and Shane. And here comes Bilwak, and Bilwak has the engine in his boat that they were going to run in Qatar, but they had to put it in this race after he lost the engine in the second round of qualifying heats. Yeah, I'm sure it wasn't by choice. Uh, this is pretty much all they have to run, but you know it's a good engine if they were saving it for Qatar. Tommy Thompson, Greg Hop, for position. Up front, Jimmy Shane. Look at that glare from the sun. Boy, you, you talk about a glare. When you come around that corner and you got a windshield in front of you in the sun, it's even worse than what we're looking at right now. Man, they are really flying these boats. This right here, there is nobody lifting. You can see each of these boats getting up on their own with just a little bit of wind coming underneath. They're flying them. Steve David leads, but Jimmy Shane is right there. Listen to the lap two speeds for these boats. For David, 147.3. For Shane, 147.9. For Billwalk, 147.2. They're basically running the exact same speeds. There's John Zimmerman running well in fourth place. But the disadvantage to Dave Billwalk is he's on the outside. He's got a lot of rough water. He's going to have to bring it in if he wants to make up some time. This is a good battle right here. Tommy Thompson in his first ever unlimited hydroplane final and the veteran Greg Hopp. Tommy doing a nice job keeping it close in on the pins. He's also being introduced to the unlimited wall of water. Man, that's a tight, narrow path he's got there. Top three drivers in the sport are the top three boats on the water. Listen to the speeds from lap three. For Steve David, 149.9. Jimmy Shane, 148.9. And for Bill Walk, 149.1. Scott Lidicote off the pace, headed back to the pits. They had to be towed in twice on Friday. Not a good weekend for the Degree Men Club. 58-year-old Steve David looking for his 16th career win. Comes in off the win at Seattle. And Miss Madison, oh boy, Alberto. Coming around to get the white flag. Jimmy Shane still chasing him, and Bill Watts there too. On board with Shane. Lap four for Steve David, 151. 0.4 miles an hour, 151.0 for Shane. Watch Jimmy Shane here. He's as close as you can get on these pins, trying to keep it in tight, trying to make up as much time as he can on Steve David with just a half a lap to go in this race. On board with Greg Hoff. Battling with Tommy Thompson, and Thompson moves forward to take the position. That's for fifth. Huge weekend for Peters and May. Tommy Thompson in his first unlimited race. Back up front, Steve David on the left. Jimmy Shane runs in second in the yellow boat, the Graham trucking. And here comes the spirit of Qatar, Dave Philwatt. Philwatt's fast, but he's going to run out of time. It's going to be a two-boat dash to the finish between the veterans. Steve David, five-time national high points driving champion and a three-time national team champion. Jimmy Shane started driving when he was eight years old. He got his first win in Tri-Cities just weeks ago. But this time, it's going to be the veteran. Steve David takes the checkered flag and wins on Mission Bay in San Diego. Second for Jimmy Shane and third for Dave Dilwa. We'll talk to the winner, Steve David, when we come back to San Diego. Oh boy, Steve David loves to win. 16th career victory. And he goes back to back with wins in Seattle and San Diego. Let's take a look back at the final heat here on Mission Bay. 16 made an engine change and a prop change. He was fast. He was fast, and I think uh, Mike Hansen probably made the final call. He wanted a quick propeller, a quick gearbox to get down to that first turn first and worry about the rest later. Smoothest water is always for the guy that's out front, and that was Steve David. Told you the tech guys work long after sundown. That's the data box going back to the tech inspection truck, and we're going to Mike. Steve, congratulations. We knew this was going to be a hot final. These guys gave you a great piece. And I would have to say you drove the Sponsons off of this thing. I uh, drove my heart out. I think we have about a 650-point lead in the national championship. Roberto just ran perfect. My team gave me an outstanding boat. And, and what a team I've got, huh? I mean, these guys, you know, they come from all other parts of the country. They show up on a weekend. They know their jobs so that I tell them what to do. I get my feedback in. They set it up the way that I feel I can drive this thing the best. No arguments. They go, here's what you got. Go get it, kid. It's up to you. It's a 58-year-old kid. Shane second, Bill Walk third, Zimmerman fourth, then Tommy Thompson fifth, followed by Greg Hopp, Scott Liddicote did not finish. 
There appears to be a developing story. The man in the sunglasses is Sam Cole, the chairman of the H1 series. Him being in the tech truck, not usually a good sign. We'll check on that first to Mike. Jimmy, I have to congratulate you because the second place finish in this final was very strong. Holy cow, that was close. I'll tell you what, man, what a fantastic race, especially for the fans. You couldn't get any better than that. First two laps, we were absolutely deck to deck. Having that inside lane, you know, I was making, able to make it up in the corner, so it made for a great race. As the race got on, the water got rougher and rougher. It just made it harder for me to stick it in there on the insides. Yeah, but he doesn't mind. He's having a heck of a year. Steve David has a healthy lead in the driver point standings with one race to go. That's the World Champion. Championships in Doha, Qatar in January. That's Chief Referee Mike Noonan. You got a chance to meet him earlier. He's in the tech truck. We'll follow that story. First, let's hear from Dave Vilwak. Just going up to go up to the score up turn up there and and the five was in the inside and Steve Davis was next to me and I was there and there was just enough room. The 88 went through and then it went across in front, put some salt in it. Uh, then it didn't want to accelerate after that and I got it up here and managed to squeeze it off but as a couple of boat lengths back by the time that I finally got it to go you know I almost didn't run it because I wasn't sure what was going to blow up another motor so you know it's just how it goes but once he got it going man he was working hard now that's Mike Noonan and Scott Patton they are examining the six boat this is highly unusual an update when we come back Experience the extreme adrenaline action of H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Racing by winning the H1 Unlimited trip to Qatar sweepstakes. And don't miss your chance to win this exclusive trip for two to the 2014 UIM World Championship in Doha, Qatar. We pay for the airfare, hotel accommodations, and VIP ticketing to H1 Unlimited Race. Find us on Facebook for a chance to win a trip to the 2014 World Championship in Qatar. Complete contest details at h1unlimited.com. The 2012 Air National Guard Hydroplane Series has been brought to you by Air National Guard. Visit GoANG.com to learn more about exciting opportunities in your area. By Whispering Turbines, where life begins at 200 miles per hour. And by Peters and May. For professional management of your worldwide boat transport and logistics, remember Peters and May. Fifth race of the Air National Guard season is over. Steve David was the winner on the water, but we have been following this story for quite a while now. They continue to examine some pieces and parts from the Oboy Alberto team. The tech truck has been a very busy place, a lot of traffic in there. Several crew chiefs have made a visit, and Chief Referee Mike Noonan is ready to make a statement. Our data indicated some kind of an anomaly in the fuel flow data on the six. Uh, we had to verify all of our equipment. We wanted to look at the data. We ran several tests. We looked at every piece of equipment we gave them as far as to measure uh, based on what we saw and, and the determination from those tests that we could do here in our truck. Uh, we, I made the determination that there was enough evidence to show that there was a fuel flow violation, which is flagrant, which results in a DSQ from the heat. Uh, I do expect a protest or appeal to be made by the team which is in the rules which they are allowed to do but in the meantime i am going to take all the equipment that we used all the equipment we had pack it up and send it to the manufacturer who is race pack up in la area and let them take a look at it and see if they can tell me why this anomaly that we're seeing in the data is uh, ha occurring well, that's a shocking change. It gives Jimmy Shane the win and takes away 400 points from Steve David. And as you can imagine, he's not very happy about it. Well, there's an appeal process, which obviously do. Their equipment failed, and so they've got to send the equipment out to get it tested. We're quite confident when they do, they will find out the equipment failed because our uh, fuel flow wasn't over the rules. It was the low-pressure fuel they're getting erratic readings on. So I'm quite confident it'll be overturned. Steve is confident it's going to be overturned. He was talking to us about that. You can see how it changes the driver point standings, and it will also change the team standings. Jimmy Shane, a reluctant winner. Jimmy, for the time being, the Alberto team has been disqualified, so that puts you guys first. That's unbelievable. You know, you never want to win a race that way, but you have to, everybody's got to play by the rules. Everybody's on the same page when it comes to that. So if it was something that they did, you know, I'm sure it wasn't something intentional. Uh, they're a great team, fantastic team, but I got to hand it to my guys. They kept me in the hunt all weekend long, and uh, we were able to pull this thing out. And he deserves a lot of the credit, too. Drove a very good weekend of unlimited hydroplane racing. There you see the unofficial boat standings pending the appeal by the 16.
Well, we love boat racing in San Diego, and you just saw why. Fast, competitive, and we're going to see the same thing in Doha next time out. Man, they were side by side all afternoon on Mission Bay. That's why you've got to get out to an H1 race. And remember, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Hey, that's another one of the officials, Walt Ottenad. Walt and his crew do a great job with our onboard GoPro cameras, so thanks for all the work all season long. Jimmy Shane declared the winner in San Diego for now. On October 31st, the smile was back on Steve David's face because the team's appeal was upheld. Here's the H1 official statement. The hearing committee heard input from parties directly involved with the appeal, as well as technical experts. As a result, the committee unanimously agreed to allow the appeal, recommending reversal of the disqualification at the San Diego final race. So Steve David reinstated as the winner. He gets the 400 points. That dramatically changes the overall point picture and makes Steve the very first winner of the North American Championship presented by Peters and May. We'll see you next from Doha.